All right, this is the third video and probably the final video in what has become a series of me trying to completely overhaul all of my data management stuff. You may have seen the previous videos where I introduced uh, tape storage and a one petabyte server. So we have the more long-term offsite storage and the more accessible archiving in place. The final piece of this puzzle is what I edit from. This video is sponsored by Iodine. Up until about a year ago, my previous setup was keep all of the data on the Linus server and on two of these huge 168 terabyte Thunderbolt raids, each using two drives for parity. And then I would drag the files of the current video onto this 12 terabyte raid, which I had in raid zero. I basically just wanted the fastest performance possible while I'm editing. Didn't really matter if I lost one of the drives and lost the entire array. It's all stuff I've got on my other bigger raids. So I drag stuff over to that and start editing. That worked well for a while, but then I started using the cameras that shoot upwards of 100 gigs a second. And if I'm doing a video where I'm trying to film multiple attempts, we're trying to get that perfect shot, so I'm just shooting it, shooting it. It ended up being so much data, I wouldn't be able to fit all of the footage from it on that raid. Because typically I've got a couple of other unfinished videos on the go at the same time. So it got to the point where the bottleneck was, I would need to move a video that I hadn't finished yet off to make room for this other one. So my main issue is that my fastest drive didn't have the capacity of my new workload. That was the additional downside of it being spinning disks. So if I went off to make a drink or replied to an email and came back, I'd immediately start dragging on the timeline. It would pinwheel while every drive had to spin up again, which is fine. But when it happens 200 times over the course of an edit, I did often end up just standing there like this. Now, it'd been a long time since I bought this 12 terabyte RAID. It was, I mean, there's six drives and it's 12 terabytes. So we're talking two terabyte drives in there. That was probably a while ago. And I'd never looked into SSDs outside of it just being the place I dump footage to from the mag. And that's just so I can use the mag again. So the only place I'd had an SSD was an NVMe that I would just download too quickly and then move to my other drives, clear the SSD. It'd be more of a dumping ground so I could just use the mags a lot quicker. In this old video where I added 10 gig ethernet to my computer, I also put in an NVMe SSD, which I think at the time was two terabytes. Because this drive was so old, it spurred me just to Google, you know, what's, <laughs> what's happened in technology since I bought that. And I learned about a company called Iodine who have this device this is the Iodine Pro Data 48 terabyte version. It's an enclosure containing 12 extremely fast NVMe SSDs. On the 48 terabyte version, each SSD is four terabytes. A great feature of this device is that you can make multiple containers with varying levels of security and capacity, depending on where it be used in your workflow. You can connect up to four computers to the same Pro Data, each accessing a different container. The Thunderbolt ports are paired off meaning you can connect one into the computer and then one into a peripheral, like a monitor or a different storage device. And if you've only got one or two computers to connect to the Pro Data, you can actually use two Thunderbolt connections to the same machine to accelerate performance. So as you can see here, I'm using all four pairs of Thunderbolt to connect to just two machines, the Mac Pro and the MacBook Pro. So each one is using multipathing for optimum speed. So my practical application for these containers is that I want to have quite a large, more protected pool of data for my current edits, for my projects that I'm currently using. I don't want to lose any progress on those, so I've got that as RAID 6. And then also a separate partition that is RAID 0, just for sheer performance. And that's where I'm going to be dumping all my footage to directly from the Phantom Mags when I'm out in the field, when I'm using this in the quarry. And the security features allow me to password protect my main editing container and the other one can be open. So say if I'm out shooting 3D and I really wanna be dumping mags and I've got someone else on a different machine, they can have unimpeded access to my RAID 0 container, just dumping footage, and it doesn't affect anything about my more protected container, which I want only myself to access. Another job I've took over in Colorado, I'm downloading the TMX camera through 10 gig ethernet. Simultaneously, I'm downloading the CFast card from the 4K Phantom, and they're both going into the iodine through a dual Thunderbolt. This process on all my old gear would take me all night, but this is actually almost done, and I've not been at it too long. A RAID 0 container with multipathing is the fastest performance, but when editing from my much larger capacity RAID 6 container, I haven't noticed any drop in performance in Final Cut. 
I have noticed that the Thunderbolt connections do provide power to the laptops, but in my experience with the MacBook Pros, it's not enough power to actually charge the battery, but it will keep it from dying. So let me explain why this has made such a big difference to the way I edit and helped increase the output of the channel. We batch record, so Dan flies in, I'll rent a camera at the same time, we'll try and get as many videos done in that window. A lot of prep beforehand goes into doing that. But then at the end of those trips, I'll end up with maybe eight to 10 new videos that I've got to edit. I do all the file management, I transcode it all, I, I, I basically organize all the data and all that stuff. And then I just, in the past, had to choose which video I wanted and copy all those onto the, the fast performance RAID. What I can do now is basically take an entire shoot, say eight videos, organize it all, make projects, and have every single project on the iodine at once. This helps me a lot because a lot of the time when I'm editing, I run into an issue where I can't quite think about how to solve the problem, like I'm trying to edit around something or make something flow better into something else, or if we did three attempts at an experiment, but I only want it to take up one experiment's worth of time in the edit, I'm gonna be combining different aspects because I don't wanna show the same thing three times before we make an improvement. A lot of that, I have to think about the best way to do it and I have to try it, and if it doesn't work, I just, I ended up wanting, basically I just end up wanting to do something else instead of editing, which in the past has meant, you know, going onto email or something like that, but then, you know, I'm not editing anymore and I'm not making progress on that video. I'm procrastinating with different work but it's not the work I need to be doing. By having like eight to 10 videos in the edit at once in, on the same storage device means that if I run into a wall on one video and start getting frustrated, just don't feel like editing that one anymore, I could just procrastinate with a different edit, which totally works for me for some reason. It totally satisfies the part of my brain that's bored with this one edit. And then I get sort of new energy on the other one. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember, you know, I remember filming this. This was great. I can't, I can't wait to put this video out. And I end up, getting to stopping points on multiple videos and I end up just switching between videos to the point where I'm editing five videos at a time and whichever one I end up finishing first is the one that comes out next. But what that means is that as soon as I've put that up I've made so much progress already on so many different videos that I'm able to much more quickly finish an edit for the next slot. So instead of taking a month between edits I'm already halfway done on several other edits and I can just pick one that I'm pretty close on and usually if I sleep on a problem, come back to it the next day, I've got a good idea about how I wanna solve the thing I was stuck on. But uh, it just means that instead of having to walk away, go to sleep and come back to it, I can edit a completely different video, get to a different stopping point in that one, then maybe come back to the other one or start a new one. And it's so, it just feels so freeing that I'm no longer hindered by that weird procrastinate sort of demotivated feeling that I get when I can't figure out an editing problem. So I've been enjoying being able to just switch back and forth seamlessly by just having such a large capacity, yet very high editing performance storage pool of 48 very fast terabytes. Now a benefit to this thing that I haven't mentioned yet, aside from its increased performance and increased capacity, is its size. It's about the size of my MacBook Pro. Um, so I could just tuck that behind my MacBook in my backpack take it traveling, and I have pretty much everything I was doing at home available to me anywhere. Typically in the past, I would grab an edit, shove it on this, which is like a, I think this is two terabytes of Thunderbolt. Yeah, two terabytes, Thunderbolt 3. I'd be limited to a much smaller project with this, but I could, I, and I have edited on the road with this and my MacBook because that's Thunderbolt 3. But the ability to have the entire thing, so you know, if I've been working on five videos at a time, I could take it traveling, get it going in a hotel room, and just keep going on whatever one I feel like at that time. That's been a phenomenal change too. It's also small enough to just bring out to the quarry with us. I can download straight to it, cut out a step when I get back as well. Potentially shoot more, edit more, wherever I happen to be. So I think of all three devices, the iodine has been the one that's changed the most about my day to day. A huge improvement to the workflow, and I think that completes pretty much every aspect of it. I've now got, I've got three, two, one backups going. I've got very fast, large storage. As with the last two videos, this device is priced for the professional world. Uh, it's not something most consumers would need at this level of speed and capacity, but they do offer lower capacity versions, which are much cheaper. So hopefully this is useful to any professionals who might need it, or if you're just an enthusiast 
of fast data. Overall, I'd say the Pro Data is an absolutely game-changing piece of kit for me and the channel. It's helped me with my efficiency and my motivation to keep editing, which means I can upload much more frequently. If this was 2010 and I was using the cameras from back then and I had this exact device, I wouldn't have needed to buy anything else for about eight years probably. <laughs> I'm very thankful to Iodine for supplying the Pro Data and agreeing to work with us. I reached out to them and it's often a lot harder to do it that way around than when companies reach out to you. And that's it really, I'm now completely content with all of my behind the scenes data storage and post-production workflow. I feel really good about it. <laughs> Hopefully you found some of that interesting. Make sure you subscribe if you like the behind the scenes stuff and obviously the main channel is where all the slow-mo's at. Thanks for watching.